Hello everyone, my name is Will the Chill. Some of you may know me by my legal name, Will Braswell. I am here as one of the co-founders of the uh, Pearl 11 philosophy and movement and uh, was invited to speak about the reunification of Pearl 5 and Pearl 6 and the uh, many different projects and people involved in that. This will uh, not be a very deep dive technically into source code because we don't have enough time to do that. Um, I would love to show everyone demos of everything you see here, uh, but we probably won't have time to do it live um, unless I speed through everything way faster than I predict. But uh, we'll try and leave a few minutes for questions at the end, and if I have extra time, I'll try and run some demos. But if not, then just find me afterwards, and we'll do some person-to-person -person demos at that time. So... Uh, We'll just start right out immediately. What in the world are we even talking about when we say Perl 11? Is it a version number? Is it this or that? What, what is it? Well, that's a very good and somewhat confusing question because uh, Perl 11 is many things. Perl 11 is uh, philosophy. So there's three main parts to the philosophy. We want to have uh, pluggability of Perl, and Perl itself is that word very charged, but it means a family of languages, okay? So, pluggability of those family of languages, we want to be able to take apart the main implementations of those languages and, and uh, replace parts or uh, make new parts that may be better or different somehow. So, think, uh, you know, plugins or reusability or object-oriented type programming. Um, Right now, that's not exactly possible um, with all of the different Perl projects, so that's a major goal to work towards. Uh, the second goal of this new philosophy is, um, of course, the reunification of, of Perl 5 and 6. And, and we'll see in a minute that these are um, two different languages, and, and we're calling them siblings. Um, so. They're, uh, they're not the same language, and they're not just a, a new version of, of the same language. So that's often confusing, and, and rightly so, because you would think from going from 5 to 6, it's just the next version of the language, but it's not. It's a different language. So uh, we, we will actually have to, to recombine those languages again, reunify those languages in some way in the future, and, and it's taken us a long time to get here, and a lot of people have worked very hard on both Perl 5 and Perl 6, both of them very uh, useful and advanced languages in their own rights, and um, some of those people are, in fact, here in this room. So uh, uh, it's going to take many more years for us to, to recombine everything again. Um, and then, of course, uh, my personal favorite is the uh, runtime performance of C or faster. So this may seem crazy or difficult or impossible, but, but that's my personal passion is uh, to have my code run faster than anybody else's in the whole world. Uh, Perl 11 is also, in addition to being a philosophy, it is a development collective by which we mean there are many developers, software programmers around the world in many different projects working under this Perl 11 banner or umbrella, if you will. And um, as I had mentioned before, Perl 11 is not yet a version number. This is, we're not saying that we have released Perl version 11. This is not, not the case, so don't, don't jump ahead just yet. That, that will be quite some time before that's, that's going to happen. Uh, but we're working towards it, and we're working towards this idea of the Perl 5 plus Perl 6 equals Perl 11. And this, this was where our uh, original um, pun or idea for the name Perl 11 came from, the reunification of the two. So now I'm going to switch to another um, graphic that I have here, and we're going to have to... Let me see, how can I even do this? We're going to have to uh, switch back and forth here to a few different things because I have all these multiple desktops. Okay, so prepare yourself because you're about to be uh, exposed to a somewhat complex flowchart. 
And I know that we all hate flowcharts, but I had to create one because it's never been created before. And it was very important for us all to understand this particular flowchart. It's not even a, a joke, it's a real flowchart. So uh, I have created, and, and we're all about to see all in one chunk, I'm not going to try and step through it piece by piece, the Pearl family tree. So where did Pearl come from and what is Pearl and where is Pearl going to as if Pearl was, you know, a, a family of, of living things, which I guess you kind of can say that it is because we are a community and we are living humans that comprise all this. So let's see how well I can make this uh, work. All right, here we go. So this, uh, let's see, this is the Pearl family tree. It all started, in the beginning, there was Unix and C. And, uh, and then all these other tools came, and this man here, St. Larry Walt, wait a minute, that's, sorry, that's the wrong picture. We just have to kind of uh, <laughs> swap him out there. This man, St. Larry Wall, uh, took a lot of things into his brain. He's got, he's got a tremendous brain, um, which all of us in the uh, pro community really admire him for his genius. He's led us all to where we're at now, and he still is leading us in that regard, thank goodness. So St. Larry took Unix and C, oh, we've swapped back again, and woo, it wants to switch itself for some reason. I don't know why. It's, it's the ghost of St. Okay, see now this, that is totally unscripted, ladies and gentlemen. Let me see if I can swap it out for good here, because while it is funny, I don't want to be too disrespectful. Let's see if that stays. So St. Larry took all these ideas from other tools and uh, combined them in his brain and figured out what it did not have and used that to create everything on the right side, my right side, your left side, uh, which you can see with the blue arrows. And this, this was really Perl 1 through 5, but we just call it Perl 5 because it was the same code base, okay? And, and this is written in C, and it's actually mostly, or I would say largely at least, um, uh, Perl, or it's, uh, sorry, mostly written in C preprocessor directives, C macros and, and the like. So, so that's a, a very kind of tricky to upgrade that in the long term and to maintain it, but it also runs on like every architecture and wristwatch in the world. So um, if you can figure out the make file. But uh, essentially we had this um, uh, uh, camel and pumpkin side here where this was uh, what we think of when we just say Perl. So if you say, I'm doing Perl, I'm programming Perl, you're probably talking about the left side of the family tree. And we're going to go through that. It's quite complex. Uh, on the right side, you've got the new sister language of Perl 6 that now has a new name also called Raku. Japanese for easy or something along those lines. And, uh, and it has several implementations in children as well. And then you can see we're all kind of leading somewhere at the end. But I'm going to try and give you like a 30 second sound bite about each one of these things. Because we have a few minutes and it is worth giving lip service to every single project that's up here. So. Bear with me, because the Pearl family tree is not exactly straightforward. I'm not going to say too much about the stuff at the very top, because you all should know what most of those, I'm sure everyone in here who's at least a, a developer has probably touched one of those things at some point. Um, but I will talk about everything below. So basically, Pearl 5, aka Pearl, is a specification. So the camel is a spec, and the Camellia butterfly is a spec. These are not implementations. The pumpkin is an implementation. That's the one written in C macros. And that's the one we call it pumpkin pearl because 
of a tradition in the Pearl community where whoever is in charge of uh, that software of Pearl, Pearl 5, of that implementation of Pearl 5 for this release cycle or cycles, we call that person the Pump King, which is a, a pun on the Pumpkin King uh, or a, a combination of those terms. And that person actually is in possession of a physical item which is uh, called the Patch Pumpkin, which itself is a pun, I guess, on Pumpkin Patch. And it's a plush jack-o'-lantern pumpkin doll from, who knows, back in the 90s at some point. Somebody got this and then has passed it along. And you can see it every few years at the Pearl Conference whenever it changes to the next person who's going to be the pumpkin, the Pearl 5 pumpkin. So that's Sawyer X now, if I'm not mistaken. And, and I was there when they had, you know, Ricardo through the, the pumpkin, the patch pumpkin, and he caught it and he became the pumpkin. So that's just one of the traditions we have. That's where we get this pumpkin idea from. Well, Pumpkin Pearl spawned several forks and children. So everything that has the dark blue arrows is actually a, a port or um, fork of the Pumpkin Pearl. So we did actually end up with Vanilla Pearl briefly, which was for Microsoft platforms, which then spawned Strawberry Pearl, which still exists as the primary open source Pearl for Windows platforms. And there was, yes, there was planned to be a Chocolate Pearl at some point, uh, just never got released. It was supposed to have more GUI or something for Windows people. So if anybody here is Windows person who wants to implement Chocolate Pearl, it, it still needs to be done. Um, you, you also have uh, Active Pearl, which is a, a commercial version of Pearl that has this corporate support with Active State, the company. Um, and uh, that still is around for uh, most of the big companies that want to have the same release of Pearl compiled for all of their different operating systems with corporate tech support. Um, and compliance and all of that sort of thing. So Active Pearl does have a place in the ecosystem. And um, there were a few other forks of Pumpkin Pearl. I'll mention one right now, which is called Sea Pearl. This is quite recent. And this is also depicted as a pumpkin because it, it is really a, it's actually a fork of of Pumpkin Pearl with a whole bunch of extra patches added on. So it's kind of a bigger, taller, stacked up pumpkin, patched up pumpkin. Um, but it is actually a direct fork of Pumpkin Pearl. So that's a direct fork, thus the pumpkin imagery here. Um, now let's step back up for just a moment to the camel again. Remind ourselves the camel is a spec a specification, not an implementation. And so from that spec came several other projects that were not that C macro code, that were not forks of Pumpkin Pearl. And so the most important of those, uh, one was called Pony. This stands for Pearl on New Internal Engine. And this was Arthur Bergman and uh, one or two others. Um, worked for a few years on this. And this was actually. Uh, an attempt to, to uh, recreate the Perl 5 execution mechanisms using a virtual machine called Parrot, which you can see over here on the right side of the screen. And uh, both of those, um, Pony has since been put out to pasture, and uh, the Parrot is once again dead. Uh, yes, this is based on Parrot sketch of Monty Python, and it's deep humor all the way through the Perl community. Um, I'm... I'm, uh, I'm under the impression that the Python language also came from that, and the P from that came from the Perl lineage. So I'm sure the Python people will dispute that, but that's what some of us believe you know, ourselves to be somehow superior or more mature or an older community at the very least, which I think at least that last part is technically true. Um, so Pony never got a release, never got finished, really, but did lay the groundwork for Parrot, which lasted quite a bit longer, and in theory could be revived as the dead Parrot is trying to be sold in the comedy sketch. Um, but 
The thing that came after Pony, most closely related to Pony, is right there, rPerl. I created rPerl. This is a Perl compiler. And it is similar in many ways to the idea of Pony. So it's kind of a Pony Redux. Or, um, it, it doesn't use any of the code or, or um, really uh, the requirement for high magic Perl that was assumed for Pony. Um, but it, it is... Our Perl is a Perl on new internal engine, so it does actually fit the name Pony, that acronym, the actual technical meaning for that name. And, and that new internal engine is, is uh, a essentially compiled to C++ engine that I can talk about a bit more in a moment. Um, we have more things that still came off of that spec, um, which I'll mention in a minute. I'll, I'll get to that group in the middle here in a minute, okay? So now I'm going to jump over to the right side of the screen. I'm sure glad I didn't try and step through this thing because it's so much jumping around I would have gotten myself lost. Uh, so again, the camel implementation or spec? Spec. Butterfly implementation or spec? Spec. Okay, so everything coming off of the butterfly um, is an implementation of that spec. And there have been several. So uh, Parrot was the one of, or perhaps the earliest, attempt to create this virtual machine that was... Parrot was originally actually part of the Perl 6 official development initiative. It was then split off to become its own virtual machine. Then Pony said, hey, let's try and make Perl 5 run on the same virtual machine as Perl 6, and then Pony stopped trying to support Perl 6, and then, oh, sorry, Parrot stopped trying to support Perl 6, and then Parrot stopped trying to support Pony because Pony died. So then Parrot was <laughs> left alone for a long, long time, and other languages decided to use Parrot. So there are like half a dozen languages that target the Parrot virtual machine, neither of which right now is actively Perl 5 or Perl 6. Kind of hilarious, just the way things happened. Um, after Parrot, we had Pugs. This is written in Haskell uh, by Audrey Tang. And um, this actually did run quite a bit of Perl 6, if I understand correctly, although Perl 6 was different at the time because this was quite some time ago. And the stable production release of Perl 6 is only just a few years old now, which... Uh, is kind of the, the part over on the right we'll get to in a moment. Um, so pugs went away as well. Pugs went up to puppy dog heaven. All dogs go to heaven, I guess. Um, but that was not too long ago. So I guess in theory, if there's some Haskell hacker out there who loves Perl 6, you might could revive pugs. It's open source. Uh, there was another one, Niexa. Not even sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but this is uh, essentially an implementation of Perl 6 that's targeted towards the .NET common language runtime, uh, one of the virtual machines that Microsoft has created. And uh, I don't believe that is really uh, considered production ready. In fact, it's, it's uh, pretty much still marked as experimental at this point. Um, but I guess if, if you're really into .NET um, or you need some Perl 6 code to run in .NET, you could probably hack something together with Nexa. Uh, so then, all the way over here to the right, we're kind of getting towards the more modern and official parts of Perl 6. There's a thing called Viv, which is connected to a different thing called Standard. And Vivs is uh, Roman numerals for VI, which is 6, and V, which is 5. So it's this uh, translator from a part or subset of Perl 6 into Perl 5. It's a backwards translator if you consider going from Perl 6 to Perl 5 backwards. Although, as we show them here, they're actually on the same level because we're calling them siblings. One is an older sibling, one is a younger sibling, um, but they're still siblings. So anyway, to translate from sibling to sibling, sibling Viv was was a tool to do that. And there are other tools now, but that was an early tool that was important because it's, it was and is actually still part of the official Perl 6 repo and code base. And uh, Viv was used to help 
kind of bootstrap Perl 6 so that it could run part of itself in Perl 5. And uh, it had this other thing connected to it called standard. And it's called standard because it means St. Larry's standard grammar. And there was a standard for Perl 6 and there was a standard for Perl 5. And, and uh, there still are. They're in the code base still. The issue is that neither Viv nor standard is still uh, being actively developed as part of Perl 6. So there's a lots of moving parts of Perl 6 that are complicated. But um, uh, these. These two were important for several years because they were used as part of the official spec and official experimental, I guess, implementation of Perl 6. Um, and, uh, and so those, the standard uh, dot PM6 and standard 5 dot PM6, if I'm remembering the exact file names correctly, these are both uh, PM6 files, which means a Perl 6 module. And and those Perl 6, mo 6 modules were uh, run through Viv to spit out Perl 5 code that would run in Pumpkin Perl and thus give, again, this sort of bootstrapping of Perl 6 running in Perl 5. And why would you need to bootstrap? Because Parrot never worked fully as a, as a VM, so we didn't really have that to target to run things on. Um, Pugs eventually went away. Um, and uh, Niexa is experimental and for .NET only. So there had to be some way to have this sort of uh, uh, cross-platform, which Pumpkin Pearl is, um, runtime that, that the very, very high level, high magic parts of Pearl 6 could run on top of. And so using Viv and Standard allowed us to have Pearl 6 stuff running on Pearl 5 for several years. And that is no longer necessary. Because now there is a real, true, self-contained, self-sufficient, self-supporting implementation of Perl 6, which is called Rakudo. And this is kind of part of where the name Raku comes from. And it's this sort of Japanese idea, uh, Rakudado, if I remember my Japanese correctly, um, is way of the camel. So it's a reference back to the Perl 5 spec. And um, uh, essentially is a, a stack of several different components. There's one called NQP, which stands for not quite Perl. It's a subset of Perl 6 that is easier to bootstrap and can then be used to implement the other more complicated parts of Perl 6. And uh, Liz, if I'm wrong about any of this, I'm sure you're going to have an ugly look on your face. I'm not a Perl 6 developer. We have one in the room who knows much more better about this than I do. I'm, I'm a Perl 5 developer. Um, so then there's a, another part of the stack called More VM. And this is a low-level virtual machine that was implemented from scratch um, in order to run just Perl 6. So it matches the Perl 6 semantics very closely because it was designed for that, and thus is now properly running Perl 6. And uh, we don't have to try and run Perl 6 on top of Perl 5 or on top of the CLR or on top of Haskell or on top of the dead parrot because it has its own more VM now. So, so that kind of stack of Rakuto, NQP, and more VM is the modern, uh, I guess you could say, official Perl 6 implementation. Although there's also this um, avoidance of calling things too official because you have the spec, you can implement your own if you really are that insane. But you probably don't want to do that because it's taken you know, all the smartest people working in the Perl 6 development team for 2000 until now to get there through all these iterations. It's, you know, re-implementing Perl 5 or Perl 6 is, is not for the faint of heart. It takes many, many years. I'm on my sixth year of my implementation of Perl 5, and I only have a small part implemented so far. It's, it's quite complicated. Um, so that's kind of the Perl 6 side. Now let's jump back to the middle. Because as you can see, there are parts that are actually inheriting from both sides. And this is where it gets interesting. So you've got. First up, Perlito, 
Um, this was uh, created by Flavio Glock and is essentially a uh, implementation of Perl 5 and Perl 6 that can compile into JavaScript or Java, and as we know, not the same thing, um, and also sort of can translate between 5 and 6 to a certain degree as well, directly between Perl 5 and Perl 6. So that's pretty neat. That's been around for a while. And Flavio was actually there remotely when, uh, when we came up with Perl 11 originally. So he's, Perlito is one of the original Perl 11 um, projects. P2, um, not as far along as Perl 11, or most of the other projects on here, but still worth mentioning. This is uh, Rainy Urban, one of the co-founders of Perl 11, with myself and Ingi.net. And um, this is based off of a small VM called Potion by Why the Lucky Stiff. Uh, and, and Why has disappeared, but his, his VM is still around. And so Rainy um, has started coming up with his plans and ideas for a total, from scratch, implementation of 5 and 6 on a single small fast VM. It's all based on jitting and Potion is pretty cool from what I understand. I'm not a Potion expert, but, uh, but that's a pretty interesting project. So if we've got any hackers that might be into that, that's a real fertile soil to work on right there for uh, reunification. And uh, we've got a new one called Web Pearl. Um, and this is uh, Hauka. My apologies if I'm mispronouncing. Uh, but this is actually, you can see Web Pearl is inheriting all the way from Pumpkin. It's kind of, you know, convoluted, but it's there. Uh, Perlito and P2 are re-implementations of Perl 5 from the spec. Web Pearl is actually a port of Pumpkin Pearl to WebAssembly via Clang. Also, uh, again, Perlito and P2 are re-implementations of Perl 6 from the spec, but Web Pearl's not. Web Pearl is actually, again, a port of the Rockado stack, again, to WebAssembly via Clang. That's pretty cool stuff. And a lot of make file magic, from what I understand. But it works. And um, that's, that's pretty much brand new. It just came out a few months ago. So, um, so those guys in the middle are the furthest along on the reunification pathway. Um, but we're certainly not there yet. Uh, you can see I've kind of pointed us all in some future direction here. Uh, Pearl 11 is this, again, philosophy and development collective that we came up with in 2012. Ingi.net and Rainy Urban and myself met. Um, I brought them to Austin, Texas, where I am from. And uh, we had Flavio uh, of Perlito on the uh, video chat with us and a few others. And we came up with the idea of Perl 11. And we came up with the philosophy, the three points. And, um, and since 2012, we've been trying like herding cats is, is nowhere near the right analogy because everybody is pretty much completely independent. So we're not even herding anything. We're just trying to coordinate efforts to bring them all into the Pearl11.org umbrella and um, to at least have technical discussions. You know, we've got our own IRC channel and all of this sort of thing so that those of us that are working on our own Perl implementations, such as myself on R Perl and so forth, we can discuss technical details that pertain to the greater picture, the bigger picture of Perl 11 and, and how we're going to somehow reunify at some point. So all of these sort of active or 
important and significant Pearl 5 and Pearl 6 projects will, if they survive, because we see some of them don't, but the ones that do survive will somehow eventually move in that direction of Pearl 11. And, and I don't pretend to know exactly how that will happen, but I, I can tell you that um, I'm working on our Pearl. Right now this is, is an implementation of Pearl 5. I'll be you know, adding Pearl 6 support any minute now. I'll be adding Pearl 6 support. As soon as I'm done here, I'll start, I'll start on it, maybe. But uh, we will have Perl 6 support in our Perl as soon as I'm you know, far enough along with Perl 5 that I feel like it's time to switch gears. And so eventually we'll have an arrow from Camellia, the colorful butterfly, over to our Perl. And so our Perl is at least one pathway, like these other guys in the middle, Okay, our Perl is at least one pathway to implement eventually all of Perl 5 and all of Perl 6 in one common code base that runs together, somehow seamlessly. And even the exact mechanisms of how they will run together is still being worked out, but there's like a, a use v5 and a use v6 sort of tag um, uh, that can tell the compiler which version to use and that sort of thing. Um, so, that was a whole lot on one gigantic, annoyingly complicated slide, but we had to know where we came from, where we're at, and where we're going in order to understand, even just in general, what Pro 11 is trying to encompass. So, I will switch off of this terribly colorful and amazingly awesome graphic for the time being, and see if I can uh, switch back to my presentation. Is that it? Yes. Okay. Moving on. This was just, again, an overview of the four most important Perl 11 implementations right now. And um, I, I can't have every single thing that was on that gigantic thing to have its own single slide, but I gave a few of them, okay? Perlito I mentioned is Flavio. Um, this again is Perl 5 and 6 to Java and JavaScript. He's been working on it longer than I've been working on R Perl by several years. He's out of Amsterdam. Why did he create it and why would you want to use Perlito? First of all, it's running inside your browser virtual machine. So if you have a JavaScript virtual machine or a Java virtual machine inside your browser, then you can just run stuff in your browser. You don't have to download and install extra stuff. That's pretty cool. Um, this is actually written in Perl itself. So if you're a Perl hacker, you can go and read the code and understand probably somewhat how it works. And it is a transpiler. So again, it has this sort of Perl 5 to Perl 6 ability as well. Um, so if you are a futuristic Perl hacker and you want to see how your code runs in one versus the other, then that's another feature of Perlito. Why would you not be able to use Perlito for some specific projects? Well, first of all, a lot of Perl code relies on C. Perl itself is written in C, but there are uh, the actual what you would think of as Perl modules or libraries or even Perl applications, a lot of that has C code embedded or hidden in it with this thing called XS. And XS is this extension system that uh, is essentially a type of C, a way to connect C code into your Perl code. And uh, that is not easy to convert to JavaScript or Java. In fact, it's just probably intractably impossible. I would not try and do it without some other much more complicated automated mechanism. So you're not going to be able to use a lot of your Perl modules off of CPAN, okay? Um, which means uh, most normal Perl apps would not work in that case. If you're writing what we call pure Perl, where you know that it's not loading up some other module, that has C code hidden in it, then you can use, you can almost certainly get it to run in Perlito. 
But if you're doing something like loading a module off of CPAN, even if you think that module is safe, it's probably safe to assume that it, it has some subdependency somewhere that does have excess and you're not going to be able to make it work right. So that's a, a limitation. And Perlito is a subset of Perl 5 and 6, so there would be some super special parts of those languages that are not yet supported directly. It's really, as I mentioned, uh, Flavio manually implemented 5 and 6 both. Good for him. It's very difficult. And <laughs> I, uh, I, I would not want to have to do it again. So there's his website if you want to get more info about that. Our Perl, this is me. It's an optimizing compiler for Perl 5 right now. Like I said, I'll be adding Perl 6 at some point. Um, it's all about performance. That's the only thing that matters. Our Perl is faster than anybody else's code in here or at FOSTEM, and I will challenge anyone that wants to implement their algorithm. I'll write the same thing in our Perl, and I'll beat you. Because I'm compiling directly to C++ with special optimizations that I'm making along the way, and I've got automatic parallelization. So I really don't think you can beat me. I invite anyone ever for all of eternity to try, but I'm putting the smack down and saying our Perl is the fastest in the world. Come at me, bro. Um, why would you not want to use our Perl? Because again, like Perlito, it's a subset of Perl 5. There's going to be a lot of the special high magic features of Perl 5 that are not yet implemented. We're working on it. I could use the help. If anybody wants, sure, join up. It's open source. Um, the other thing I'll actually mention real quick is, is if you have some Perl code that you need to protect the intellectual property, which I know is somewhat flying in the face of the whole open source thing, and yes, our Perl is completely open source, but by sheer nature of the fact that our Perl is translating your Perl 5 code into C++ and then compiling that with like GCC or whatever C++ compiler you want, you're protecting your IP with strong protection and strong, as strong as C or C++ because it is actually calling GCC. So that is strong IP protection. It's the strongest you can get for Perl. And that's just a side effect. So go to rperl.org if you want to see about that, rperl.org. So C Perl, this is Rainy Urban. OK, um, this is an actual fork of Pumpkin Pearl. Only Rainy would be crazy enough not to port, but to fork. And only Rainy would be smart enough to do that. And only Rainy would be loved and reviled enough by the Pearl community to actually perhaps succeed. But that remains to be seen. He's written several hundred patches himself which have been rejected by the Perl 5 development community based on disagreements they have. Who knows who's right? In the technical world, I think Rainey is mostly right. In the interpersonal world, I think the other people are probably right. But now we have a fork. And Rainey has applied 200, 300 patches, whatever he's written, to save a bunch of memory, to make it run faster. And you do have high magic, so C Perl is Pretty much production ready. There are some things that it may have glitches or bugs on that I think are mostly known issues at this point. But if you have production Perl, even in a big company, and you need to save some memory or get some performance benefits without really changing much or perhaps even anything, then you could consider C Perl. It could save you some memory. It could save you some dollars. It could get you a promotion. Um, I think the debugger might not work right. So if you need the Perl debugger, you might be out of luck with that one. Web Perl. Um, uh, this is Hauka. I don't know his last name. A lot of us have some anonymity in the Perl community. I don't know where he's at. He's on IRC. He talks to me on there. But uh, uh, ooh, it's not supposed to say foo. That's, part, that's what we write in Perl when we forgot to finish the slide. Uh, OK, Web Perl is a Perl 5 and Perl 6 um, runtime environment in your browser. That's what that's supposed to say. Um, why would you want to use it? Well, it's in the same vein as Perlito. If you don't want to download and install Perl, you can do this, because it's just running in your browser. Um, unlike Perlito, the XS and C code is supported. 
because it's actually compiling C through Clang to generate WebAssembly. And uh, interestingly, WebPerl also does actually have some API for interfacing with JavaScript. So you're not, you're not compiling your Perl code into JavaScript like with Perlito, but you can call between your Perl code and JavaScript. And so you've, uh, you can even use jQuery or your uh, other JavaScript frameworks or tools, um, widgets and all that, and call it from Perl. So you can actually use Perl as a web scripting language. And I think actually the idea there is to replace JavaScript because Hauka didn't want to have to write everything in JavaScript. He wanted to use Perl instead. So that's pretty sweet. Um, you can check out his website there. And uh, WebAssembly is pretty neat. And then I'll mention one more. I have created a free cloud platform called Cloud for Free. And uh, this is essentially Perl 5 and R Perl loaded up on some cloud servers I've got in Dallas. And um, it's got a uh, web front end. It's not running in the browser VMs. So this is not the same thing as either Perlito or WebPerl. This is running server side because I'm compiling the R Perl on the server and running that C code super fast on a fast server that's probably faster than your laptop and probably has access to more cores, et cetera, because it's a cloud platform, not your laptop. So it's different. If you want to run your code in your browser using your laptop's processor, then use Perlito or WebPerl. If you want to run it on the cloud using someone else's processors, Cloud for Free. And Cloud for Free is compiling using R Perl, so it's way, 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 way super duper duper faster. And we're talking about hundreds of times faster. R Perl is like up to 400, 500x, which is like 40,000 percent faster. It's not like three or four x or something like that. It's it's not comparable to normal Perl speed. Um, so in conclusion, I just thought I'd show you Rody the Roadrunner because I love our our Perl mascot, but. Pro 11 is, is many things. There's many projects here. Um, Pro 5 plus Pro 6 is Pro 11. This is our initial pun and uh, numeric pun, I guess. And <laughs> Pro 11 will be a version number someday. I don't know when that will be. It's taken us 31 years-ish to get where we're at now, uh, 32 years. Um, so it's, it's going to take another. 30-ish years to undo the mess that we're in. We're unscrambling two different types of eggs, recombining their genetics, and creating a new type of bird that can lay that special, crazy, new magic egg. So um, it will take many, many years to achieve that. But when we do get there, it will be amazing, and it will be the most advanced language in the world, because at that point, not only do you have all the power of Perl 5 and Perl 6, but the sort of crazy magical thing about Perl 6, which those of you who may have seen the other Perl talk yesterday would know about, is Perl 6 is especially designed to implement other languages. And so at some point, and all the Python and Ruby and Java people are going to super hate this part, we're going to absorb all of you, like the Borg assimilating species after species. And we will re-implement your grammars and semantics in Perl 6, and we'll have it compiled using R Perl, running Jitted on Potion or Rakuto or something, faster than your own native implementations, at which point your user base will switch to Perl. <laughs> and, 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 and at that point, Perl 11 will be the ultimate final language of all time. So thank you. Uh, that was Perl 11. We will have a Perl dinner tonight. Please join us if you want to see demos uh, or talk to us in person. And I'm Will the Chill. Thank you, Pearl 11. Uh, I think we have two minutes for questions. If there are any. I've already started disconnecting here. Are there uh, any questions?
right here. I guess I'll try and leave this back up here. I don't know if it's going to go back on. I'm listening. Go ahead. So uh, on my Linux desktop, all the Perl scripts, what are they running at the moment? Uh, say that one more time. On my regular Linux desktop, laptop, server, whatever, uh, the Perl scripts, what mm -hmm. are they running? Uh, you mean which um, yeah. implementation? It's pumpkin Perl. Pumpkin Perl. So when you say, I'm running Perl, you are running Pumpkin Pearl 5. Very good question. Thank you. Hey, hey I think there's a, another Pearl I've heard of, Stable Pearl. One more time. I think there's another Pearl called Stable Pearl. Stable Pearl. There are other forks of Pumpkin Pearl. There have been probably half a dozen of them over the years. And I. I simply did not have enough room to put them all on here. But yes, there are a few other ports or implementations of Pumpkin Pearl, of which I believe Stable Pearl is one of them. Relatively similar to C Pearl with some additional patches that may be fixing bugs that haven't been fixed in the main Pearl yet. One more question, and then I think we're out of time way up there. If you can get up there fast enough, because we've got just a moment for our last and final question. Uh, can you give some examples of the restrictions of R Perl? What is not possible to do in R Perl? Examples of restrictions of R Perl. So using magic variable names, using secret operators, um, using runtime evaluation where the perf uh, behavior cannot be determined at compile time, those are things that static compilation usually can't do anyway. All right, so again, will the chill our Pearl? I'll be at the Pearl booth right up behind there. Thank you.